What made me want to become an artist? Um, I think, I mean, thinking back to when I was, I was quite young, um, I spent a lot of time with my grandmother and she was kind of a, she was a maker of things. Um, I wouldn't necessarily classify it as art, but we, we did a lot of knitting. Um, she made these incredible, intricate uh, kind of houses of cards, which I, when I think now, I don't know, I don't know how she, she managed it. Um, we also did a lot of things like, you know, baking, and she had this big uh, kind of plot and this huge uh, back garden where they grew their own food. So I think it was always, always this thing about, I think from an early age, this idea of making things was, was instilled. Um, and then in secondary school, I had, towards the end of secondary school, the last few years, I had a really good um, art teacher who was really encouraging, and I was with a, a really good group of people. Um, and then after school, I did a communications course in Pierce College. And that was where I first kind of encountered photography um, and the darkroom. And I actually, I have to say, I think I failed all my other subjects, but I just <laughs> totally kind of um, got into photography from there. And then while I was there, I did um, work experience um, in the Temple Bar Gallery and Studios, which was, I think that was around 1989. So it was still, it was literally falling apart. Um, you know, there was holes in floorboards up on some of the, some of the floors, but I got to kind of visit some of the, I was working on the desk and I got to visit the artist studios and go to some of the events. And I just totally, I really fell in love with, with that place. And I suppose the idea of being an artist, but then I kind of, I just call it my wilderness years that I, I ended up um, getting a nine to five job and I kind of put it aside for, for quite a while, although I was still taking photographs. Um, but I, it, I really kind of come back in, came to the idea that I could be an artist as I'd be a professional artist when I did the BA in photography at the DIT um, and that was around 2000. So literally from the day I walked into that place I kind of thought oh um, you know there might be opportunities for me to exhibit my work and then since I since I graduated that's it's been ongoing like I've just kind of never stopped but I'd like to say that's like this idea of being the artist um, that I might have liked the idea of it, but now that I feel, now that I am that, I kind of feel, it's not so much that I am the artist, but I am the arts practitioner, and that's what I do, like it kind of informs the way I think and the way I live. Um, so I've kind of forgotten about this idea of being the artist, it's just doing the work and, you know, what, the, what comes from that. Both of the works in the Arts Council collection um, are from a series called Champions Avenue, which was made over a two-year artist residency at um, Larkin Community College in, in Dublin 1. Um, and the artist residency was actually supported by, the, um, by two young people and children in education bursaries from, from the Arts Council. So in some ways I feel it's really fitting that they're, they're in, the, in the collection now, which is, uh, so that's, that's kind of nice. Um, so I suppose in terms of the works themselves, there's, this, there's the portrait of Diane, and there's another image which is like an interior, kind of an architectural interior type of image. Um, um, and in terms of how that relates to my practice now, I suppose it, the, an overarching theme is kind of people and place. And the, the theme that emerged out of working with, with Larkin and with, with other schools was around people and place, but also um, ideas of I suppose inequality of, of opportunity. Um, a lot of the schools I worked with were, were Daesh schools, um, so would have a certain level of, of disadvantage uh, in terms of the opportunities or, or more the expectation of, of the children in these schools. So that theme of inequality, um, people, place, is, I suppose it's contained within, within these works. And in terms of my practice now, um, I recently started a PhD, so I'm a year into a PhD at Dublin City University, um, practice-based PhD, so there's a, there's a large kind of, uh, I suppose, our practice component um, in that I'll be producing a, an artist book and an exhibition. Um, and it's based around, I'm basically doing a case study of the area of Cabra, Dublin 7. Um, I'm kind of looking at it from a, a historical point of view and where, it, where it's at now and in terms of the, the community of Cabra and 
and how strong that, that community is and, and why it is that way. Um, so Cabra was built in the 30s, 30s and 40s as a response to a major housing crisis in Dublin at the time. Um, so we now have huge development in Cabra of, there's just one of the sites, there's, they're building like 500 built to rent apartments right in the center of Cabra. So I'm kind of looking at these, these two kind of dichotomies of this community that is built and now this kind of, you know, the outside investors that are coming in and, and building these different types of, um, you know, what these communities might, might be. Uh, so I suppose I've kind of, the work in the collection was a result of almost 10 years that I spent working with institutions, schools, young people. The work that I'm doing now, I've kind of, I suppose, moved to more, more towards um, looking at landscape, suburban landscape, but also um, community and, and the people of, of Cabra. COVID has obviously had an impact um, as it has for, for many people. Um, but in some ways I feel lucky um, because I know a lot of people had exhibitions opening um, that were suddenly shut down and couldn't, couldn't have an audience. And I had my kind of large exhibition was 2019 and it finished in October of 2019. And I really felt um, if, if that had, had been the case then, it would have been so, so disappointing. So that period from October to March to the beginning of the pandemic, I, I had started a artist residency in DCU um, and it was very much an exploratory residency. Um, and I was kind of reviewing my 10 years of, of work in schools um, and kind of bringing that into then the looking at the university and doing research into that as, as an educational space. And also I was in All Hallows, which is a really beautiful um, campus in Drumcondra, like really 18th century buildings. And it was just, it was like being in another world. So. I was kind of quite, I was kind of floating at that point. Um, I'm really just having a nice time just reflecting on, on that space. And then it was, I think we had a studio open day and literally the day after we were told to go home. Um, and I only got back in there in July, June this year. So that work was, the work I was making there was totally stopped because it was about the building and about the space. So I couldn't do that. Um, but then literally around that time, there was a call out for um, scholarships in DCU, PhD scholarships. So I thought like I'm stuck at home and I had, I had it in my mind anyway for a long time um, and something came up in photography. So I thought, okay, this doesn't happen very often. Uh, so I just put my, my mind to putting in the application. Um, so actually there was a lot of, lot of work and then did the interview and then was successful. So. So really the, the PhD and thinking about that and um, my proposal took up quite a few months of the beginning of the pandemic, um, which is not to say that psychologically it was more the case that I was worried about my, like my mother who's, you know, elderly, you know, people who are in primary school. Um, but for me, I think as an artist, you're used to working alone quite a lot. Um, so I'm quite self-contained. So that was, I was able to get on with my work. And then there was another commission came up. Um, it was called the Diversity Commission um, in association with the Creative Ireland, Dublin City Council and the Gallery of Photography. And that involved working with a group of teenage girls. And my proposal had been to, um, to talk, about, talk about diversity through a series of photo walks within the environment of each girl in Dublin. And of course, this was, I think it was towards November, December when the the pandemic really kind of kicked in again. So it made it impossible really to meet people. Um, so we did a lot of work on Zoom, we had meetings, but then I was able to stagger these photo walks um, with each girl around Dublin. And I went to exotic places like Swords and <laughs> Park West. Um, and actually it was just really interesting, even, these, even in Dublin, the difference in the different landscapes. And I chatted with the girls and was, I think, Actually, the pandemic made it more, had more impact in, in that it made it more special to be able to just talk to somebody. Um, and they were in the middle of doing their leave insert and they had so many concerns. Um, it was almost like a holistic experience. Um, and I kept, even, I mean, I took portraits, but I kept the photography side of it very low key um, so that it wasn't like a big photo shoot type thing. It was more a conversation, a walk, um, 
And then we came back on Zoom and we all looked at each other's pictures and we talked about it. So that was, a, that was through, that took nearly six months um, of the pandemic. And then I had uh, commissioned, I was commissioned by the National Gallery to take a portrait of Edna O'Brien, which was done like months and months previously. Um, and we were trying and trying to launch it. So there was literally a window around December, which turned, and it turned out to be the day of her 90th birthday, which was really brilliant. Um, that we were able to launch that so and then literally a week later everything was shut down again so it was I guess in some ways I don't know whether would I have pursued the PhD if this hadn't come along um, I'd still be making work at in DCU uh, so I think it, ha it hasn't affected me as much as maybe some people it, and in some ways it's been okay it means a lot to me to be part of the Arts Council collection um, I mean, when I think of, you know, the other work that's contained in this collection through the years, um, I think I'm in, in really good company. Um, and also, I love the idea that it will be, you know, I, I suppose it will be here after, after I'm gone. And also the fact that, it, you know, the work travels around, that other people will, um, will get to see it. Uh, and also that, it, you know, it will be looked after for, for a long time. Um, so it's kind of, yeah, it's, it feels really great and it is an honor to be to be part of of the collection but also the you know the support um means a lot for i think for any artist um the financial support and also as i as i said previously the fact that the arts council kind of supported this work from its inception with the with two bursaries um in the young people and children education um category, I mean, it wouldn't have been possible really for me to take those two years to make this work. So I think the fact that it's in the collection now is, is really, really appropriate.